Welcome back to WD Magic Cast for the week of September 24th, 2023. Happy Yom Kippur, everyone. This is episode 237. WD Magic Cast, the show about the mouse, the marvels, the galaxy, and beyond. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. In this week's show, Dave Gallman and I sit down and discuss a lot of the announcements that came out of D23 or Destination D23 about the parks and what we can be expecting going on. Plus, we follow up with some of the announcements that came after that and some of the events that happened. And stay tuned towards the end for our reaction to the new Doctor Who 60th anniversary trailer that was dropped this weekend by the BBC. Like I said, Doctor Who's coming to Disney Plus in November. And we are excited for it. Don't forget to join our social networks where we can be found on TikTok, Twitter, Threads, Instagram, Facebook, all, and YouTube at WD Magicast. Join us there. And don't forget to check out our merchandise shop on TeePublic where we're also WD Magicast. We'll be back after these words from our friends and sponsors. Hi Disney Marvels fans, my name's Tash and my BFF Mercedes and I make a weekly podcast dedicated to all things Disney. From music, movies and food and parks to fun weekly challenges, we discuss it all over at Chat Disney. You can find us on Instagram at Chat Disney or Twitter at Chat Disney UK. We release weekly episodes every Monday morning, which can be found on Spotify and the Apple Podcast app. Bye for now. And now, on with the show. A lot of things have happened since we, we've last talked. Since we've last, you've heard our, our voices come across the proverbial airwaves and for us to be able to say it would be an easy task to combine this into a five minute segment is nearly impossible 20 minutes is going to be stretching it so sit back relax enjoy the next six and a half hours of us talking to you and bringing you the latest from disney uh wrapping up yeah, it's been a little while, but the D23 Parks News, uh, Destination D23, and some other announcements that have come on the heels of that, which actually makes it better that you know we're getting to talk about this all together than just kind of at a, a one pinpoint at a time. And to talk about spending a lot of money and you know just writing out a check for $60 billion, we had to bring along someone who does that when he goes grocery shopping. <laughs> Dave Gowan. Welcome back. How's it? Everything's well. Thank you for having me, Matthew. And I just wish I was a, uh, on the receiving end of some of that sixty billion dollars. Yeah, well, you know, uh, play, keep paying the lottery. Maybe it won't happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. I, I tried to pick five just to make it my odds a little better, and I can't even win my money back on that. So, <laughs> if I get like two bucks back in a ten dollar investment, I think I, I'm actually doing okay. <laughs> So. Um, yeah, so a lot of announcements at Destination D23 of things that are happening, things that they're looking at, things that potentially will happen, um, even got some dates of things happening. So a lot of good stuff going on here. And then um, cruise news, some stuff with the, the cruise line that's going on, and then uh, some other news that's happened afterwards and fun news, uh, I'll have to say. If you bear with us, we'll get to that one. Now, I guess I'm going to leave. My first question is this $60 billion announcement. Is that tie in to all the D, the Destination D23 stuff? I can't see how it doesn't. Yeah. Um, and, and I have my thoughts on that. Everyone's saying, oh, well, you know, it's a double the amount or, or something like that that they have invested in the parks over the pa- over the previous past 10 years. There was only about 30 something. And this is what we got in that. And my thoughts that is. True, very true, but also keep in mind the amount of inflation that's happened over, you know, the past 10 years to now going forward. 
and it's projected going forward. So, yeah, it's a lot of money. It's a lot more than they've spent before, but things are costing a lot more than they've spent before. Right, so, and, it can, and it comes down to, I think we brought it up in the past episodes or whatever, is they're going to have to, if they want people to keep coming to the parks, the cruises or whatever, they got to come up with new new things to do. And, and in order to get those new things done, it's going to cost money. So Absolutely. I mean, they, you got to spend money to make money. Mm-hmm. And this is something that they're they're not familiar you know not unfamiliar with and they are i want to use the word slacking i can't think of a better word i didn't want to use the word slacking but uh, i'm going to use the word slacking um with recently neighbors are you know spending money building new parks new things Mm -hmm. going on there so you you have to compete you have to keep up you know, recently, okay, we, in the past 10 years, or even, I think, what, five years, you've had the Galaxy Edge uh, parks open, um, lands open up uh, east and west coast in the United States. You've had the uh, Zootopia area being built in Hong Kong. You've had, you're having the addition put on in Tokyo Disney Seas. You're revamping and building out on Disney Studios in Paris. So you've had a lot that has gone into uh, these other places. Plus, you've had Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, new build. That that took 10 years just to build that one out. Mm. Uh, worth it in the end, but still took ridiculously amount of long time. Um, you, you know... I have to say, I, as much as I loved Guardians of the Galaxy and how amazing of an attraction that was, it, it, COVID, you know, it did put a damper and slowed things down. But I still walk off, still walked off and going, so what took as long as it did to build this? Mm. Yeah, it, it's it's an amazing structure and there's a lot to it. So I I, I get it, but at the same time, it's like there's. No, a lot of it's screens. Right. It's not like you were building a lot of physical structures. You built a moon and a earth. <laughs> Everything else is screens. So right. like, what what exactly took that that long? Mm. And, and I'm sure there's, there's explanations out there. But anyway, uh, that aside, uh, what else? Any other big attractions you've had? Uh, Cruise ships launched. You, you know, the the Disney Wish came out. Uh, the Disney Treasure could be considered part of that too. So two new cruise ships. So you you've had stuff going. Um. So that's what they did with the previous amount. With it was a smaller amount. What are they going to do next? And they they gave us some ideas of things that are coming. Not to make concrete things of what potentially the $60 billion is as fans, we could speculate on what they could possibly be spending this money on. Um, they're hinting at expansions of parks, uh, new attractions, revamping areas of parks. Haven't heard anything about a new park, but is that also out of the realm of possibility? I mean, 10 years, you, well, not the speed that they've been building recently, but you can really, you can, you can, announce and build a new park in that time frame yeah and there aren't they uh a new cruise ship right or they're revamping a ship that's turning into the new disney cruise ship that's a part of the 60 billion oh yeah let's let's skip ahead but yeah since we're on the cruise ship part um yeah because we have the disney treasure that's launching next year that she's you know mostly built out Mm -hmm. you have the global dream that they purchased which is going to be an Asian ship that they're refitting. Um, they announced that she will now be the Disney Adventure, mm. and she will be coming out in 25. So that that's coming out. Um, they do have at least one more ship, I believe, contracted to be built, which will should be on the same uh, style as. The Disney Wish and the Disney Treasure, because those are sister ships. That's just, I guess. 
wish class, I guess, would be the best way to call it. Um, but yeah, those are those are the same style of ship. So there's going to be a third one that's coming out because um, that will bring the fleet size now to two, four, five. That will bring it to eight. Um, and it's possible that they may do another one. They also announced the private island lookout K at Lighthouse Point, which will be debuting next year. Uh, oh, next year, 24. I put 24. I thought it was next year. Next year is 24. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's 2023, Matthew. I, I know it's hard to believe, but time flies, man. I thought it was 1987. <laughs> what happened? Now, with the because I've never been on a Disney cruise uh, uh, ship before. Do they try to hang with the? Are their ships designed to hang with the big guys like uh, you know Norwegian or Royal Caribbean, or or do they keep theirs relatively? You know, are they trying to be the big cruise? You know how like uh, the. The wonder was the the big ship, and now the icons coming out. Do they try to make these huge humongo ships to try to compete with them, or do they just keep it, you know, uh, average? I guess average. Yeah. Um, they 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 make they try for larger, mm-hmm. but they stay within the mean. So they're okay. they're kind of more in the the average size, uh, the bigger average size. Then they are they're not trying to compete with Royal Caribbean and the, the Oasis class ships or the Icon mm-hmm. or even the um, Quantum class. Mm-hmm. These are these are larger ships, but they are still within the kind of ballpark of everyone else's medium to large ships. Okay. So, it, but each time that they do a new build, they, they do make them bigger. Right. The, uh, the Adventure will be their largest ship by far, and I foresee it being their largest ship for a little while. Mm. So, um, but yeah, no, they I, they they do try and make them bigger, but yeah, they're they're not they're not going for you. Know, we're making the largest cruise ship in the world. We're we're making a decent sized ship and then putting um, upscale stuff inside. They they Disney sees themselves as an upscale upper scale uh cruise line like princess celebrity um uh holland america uh those higher Mm. class type of cruise lines so one that's their justification for the price because they are one of the most expensive cruise lines out there and two just for the amenities and the uh quality of what they they offer out there that's yeah, that's where they they see themselves. Hmm. Noted. So, yep. And like I said, they have the second private island coming out. Um, so they yeah they they have a fair amount of things things coming out. Um, but on top of that, also with the the sixty billion, they they have or they've. I mentioned that they have over a thousand acres of land for possible further development um, across their existing site. So it's not a thousand acres of land in one spot. It's a thousand mm-hmm. acres of land across all their theme parks. Um, so there is a lot of possibility. Um, a lot of possibility of things that they can do there. They've mentioned about considering ideas such as cocoa uh, themed areas and one that just recently was announced was wakanda mm-hmm. yes Which, but but is that is that for disneyland or is that because i thought i saw something that that was going to be an extension off of their marvel uh thing there um that is yes that that is something more focused to be extension off the marvel land in uh in disneyland california adventures um the avenger academy area the the new attraction the king thanos ride i think takes place part of it in wakanda so that's kind of the natural spin-off for there Mm -hmm. but there was also talks about possibly doing that in animal kingdom because that also would be a natural fit there yeah yeah so that that is something that could be done 
multiple areas or but more marvel is a good thing i i think in the parks yeah i think that would you know uh, i like you i think animal kingdom would be the logical place for it and that would bring me back to that park um and i would look forward to it obviously but no it it, it whatever they do you know if it we'll wait till it gets out on disneyland we look it up on youtube see how cool it is and say okay bring it to us <laughs> there we go <laughs> that's the game plan on that but speaking of animal kingdom let's stay in animal kingdom for a moment um they're they're going to be switching out the tough to be a bug show in the tree of life mm -hmm. with zootopia um so they they got a, a lot of things that they're working on and some of it they're bringing over from uh um from Hong Kong where they they are they're building the Zootopia land there they are um oh I forgot the, what's the, the the cheetah's name um but yeah, they're going to have replace the Hopper A figure with uh with him mm -hmm. so it's going to be a very uh except it's a very um lifelike more advanced AA figure that they are AA being auto audio animatronic figure that's going to go in there and um so that that should be interesting i mean that, that attraction has been there for a while um i think there's a reason why there's plastic seats there <laughs> makes it easier to clean yeah with the uh the black widows dropping down and, and whatnot um, something else that they talked about, and this kind of leads into the whole Wakanda theory, suggested that um, retheming Dino Land USA to a more central Latin America region, that's someplace that they haven't touched on, and two IPs that they could drop into there, that this is where the, I guess their line of thinking is at the moment, would be Encanto for the more um, northern part of that section and Indiana Jones for the more southern part, um, the dinosaur area um, that they're going to drop in there. As far as the ride, if you take the ride system, pretty much the, if you take dinosaur and literally put it in the same spot as the Indiana Jones attraction in Disneyland, it's almost ex identical. Mm -hmm. It's the same ride vehicles, even though the track is pretty much the same. So that would be a natural, easy switch over. Now they could change the story up a little bit. They could they could do a bunch of things. But you're using the same ride vehicles. You just reskin them. You go in, gut the ride, put in some new stuff, and then you you have an Indiana Jones ride <clears throat> with an existing ride without having to like really have to spend a lot of money and build a whole new something or other so that is that's a possibility and i, I like dinosaur so I'm, I'm kind of i'm on the fence about how i feel about this yeah yeah i mean i mean they already have an indiana jones show in, in hollywood studio right so yeah. it's why do we need another Indiana Jones show? I, I mean, I don't know. Well, this um, isn't a show. This is a ride. Oh, it's a ride. Okay. Yes. Or, yeah, because that's a Sun Spectacular. This would be an actual ride. So they're just retheming. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know. I would do it different. I mean, that's just me. Encanto would probably make more sense than Indiana Jones, but uh, I'm not. Because I, I don't know. I think you already have one. So kind of like you have Star Wars in Magic in Hollywood Studio, and you have some in in magic kingdom but i don't know when i think the star wars stuff i'm thinking hollywood i'm not thinking anywhere else <laughs> right so it's like do i don't spread it i mean do they want to spread all these ips across the you know the same ips across all the studios i don't know does it make sense to i, I don't know um, it, it kind of does it kind of does i mean think of nemo you have nemo in epcot you have nemo in animal kingdom um you have lion king uh in animal kingdom epcot is there anything currently of this Lion King in the studios? No, it was in the Magic Kingdom at one point. Um, so, yeah, you, you you do have a tendency of spreading around uh, IPs in in different places. So that that's not exactly a a new um, new game plan. Mm. Um, 
it's uh, and it, it like I said, it's a ride versus a um, a show. <clears throat> so it, it's kind of two totally different things. The, the theming of the ride would kind of fit in with everything. Um, I just for me to lose Dinoland USA, okay, maybe it's not the most traveled area. It kind of it changes the vision of the park again, but that seems to be something that they're they're doing anyway, because the the initial plan of the park was animals that were animals that are and animals that never were. Mm. So and you you stick to that theme. You so you have the the dinosaurs, the animals that were, so the extinct animals, and learning about uh, animals of the past and, and conservation through that way. The animals that are obviously the safari and all the existing animals that are currently there. And the animals that never were was where Camp Mini Mini ended up. It was supposed to be this whole dragon themed fantasy land with dual, like a dual racing roller coaster, and just a lot of really cool stuff planned. Obviously, never happened, but then we got Avatar put in there. Kind of fits that same vision, though. Animals that never were. Again, going with the conservation of, of resources in our natural environment. So that fit in perfectly. Now we're getting Encanto and Indiana Jones. And Indiana Jones. So basically all the, what I'm thinking, because there's other, it's been a while since I've been here, obviously, but I'm assuming there's other dino or dinosaur themed small rides and all that there, if I remember correctly. There was. So at this point, if they pull the trigger on this, all all of that's going to be removed, I guess, and they're going to pull in some new stuff with these two new IPs. Well, a lot so, of that has been removed already. You had Primeval Twirl and Twirl, yeah, that, um, and the Triceratops spin that mm-hmm. that all stuff, which was meant to look like a carnival type of area, part of Chester Hester's uh, carnival. It started off as just a shop, and then they built this whole fun fair area uh with the the primeval world and twirl which was a mouse uh mouse coaster mm. well they had some issues with that they shut that down they ripped it out mm. um so right now it's just a blank expansion pad that's where encanto is going to go okay um then you have the theater in the wild which is where nemo takes place um which is kind of kind of its own separate thing um so, yeah, you're pretty much stripping any of the dinosaur stuff out. The boneyard's going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it'll be an archaeological dig because that's going to be closer to the Indiana Jones section. Uh, the Restaurantosaurus is going to change theming. Still going to be there. Uh, and then uh, right off of that is Indiana Jones. You know, the, the picture that they shared, there's a giant temple that's going to go up over the uh, what's the institute area now? So you're going to walk into this like South American uh, Incan temple or Mayan Honestly. temple. Yeah. So they would have to shut that whole section down then of the of the park that just that yeah. little and uh, right. OK, because, uh, you know, how uh, Splash Mountain, they're, they're only closed down that part where the ride is. This is an actual section they're going to have to shut down to retheme the whole thing. Right. Right. OK. Right. So which isn't actually that hard to do because mm-hmm. there's a, there's really two main entrance points mm. so one off the discovery island the the uh, spoke area so you you block off that one then you block off the northern end by the the theater in the wild and there you go you start demoing and rebuilding so yeah that that's the um Kind of the, it's. I'm excited to see more Indiana Jones in the parks. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Encanto's big, so kind of makes sense to me. Um, yeah, so we, we'll see. There, yeah, they're they're looking the the um, artwork also showed the casita with the house from uh, Encanto being built up in that area. So that's going to be some sort of attraction. Of some sort, mm-hmm. yeah. This is this is all pie in the sky, blue sky thinking. Um, but obviously, they've put some thought into it if they've they've done and draw, done up a uh, artwork for it. But that's the that's the run on Animal Kingdom. 
Um, really okay. wasn't really wasn't much mentioned for the studios. Yeah, Hollywood. I didn't see anything that popped. It was no. uh, it was Epcot. There was some a lot of things, not a lot, but a few things in Epcot going on. Um, Epcot, I think, got actually kind of the bulk of it. Um, so if you want to go to Epcot next, we're talking about. They're going to reimagine uh, Fast Track or Test Track. You got Sorry. the reimagining of Test Track. It's 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 ten years. It's time for its refresh, and they're going to draw on inspiration from its past. So basically, World of Motion. Um, Chevy wants to go in there and um, bring some of that back. Doesn't look like they 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 showed a little flash of concept art. It doesn't look like the ride vehicles are changing. Probably even the ride layout is. It's just going in and re redoing the insides again. Where we, before we went from the actual test track type of uh, look and feel, and you know, you you had the the truck and the cobblestone and the trees and kind of made the, this whole like you're driving on a road and you're going through all these tests mm. and then they went with the more futuristic type of look where it made it look very tron-esque with the the um, lines and the abstract um you're not actually looking at physical structures but kind of lines of stuff mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> um <laughs> no real like actual items it's all like you're driving through a virtual computer simulation you built the the test vehicles um you designed your own vehicle so is like this going to be the same thing though are you going to be able to with this reimagination are you going to be able to design your own vehicle still or no i don't know they they didn't mention that if you were to ask me i'm thinking probably not but um yeah, you know, they they haven't said. Uh, if that's going to be the case or not, yeah. You know, again, it's um, all kind of still up in the air. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot more that they have a general idea of what's going on in the background, but they haven't. Yeah, you know, they're not going to release that type of information yeah. just yet. Yeah, yeah. And they're working on that. Um, and if Finally, the journey of water uh, is going to open, what, October 16th? Uh, 23rd, I think, right? Uh, 23rd. Oh, okay. That's right. I think it was the 23rd. Yeah. Uh, October Moana journey of water is opening 23rd. There's previews going on now. I've seen some of the walkthroughs, some of the previews. Looks fun. Um, looks like it's a, a fun little thing to do. Um, they put a lot of interactive things going through you. You put you swipe your hand through uh, water streams. It makes it sound like harps. There's a an area you can walk through. There's a, a water curtain coming down, and as you walk through, the curtain opens up to let you through, where you're not going to get wet. There's play areas that you will get splashed. Lift your hands. Waves will come up. There's there's a lot of interactive uh, elements to it to, to make it fun. There's a splash pad for our kids. Um, individual bathrooms. So there's a lot of different things um the general response that i've been hearing has been positive that's a lot of fun and it'll People be nice it. to uh it'll also be nice to walk around without the big uh you know construction walls there too. yes <laughs> you know it, I mean? it's about time to get rid of those those are yeah. be going away the lighting package at night it looks very beautiful now so, if this if this is a walkthrough yes i saw that they had to put this in the queue that they're or they're going to put this in the queue Yes, it, but if it's a, I guess what that's to, I, I'm assuming just to, uh, so that everybody doesn't go there at once to walk through the thing. So I guess in the beginning they're going to have to only allow a certain amount of people through this certain area. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is a probably not a permanent um, virtual queue thing. It is for the time being, since it's new, keep things under control and uh, flowing properly. Pardon the pun. It is a, um, yeah, there's going to be the virtual queue and there's lines, uh, a lineup for it, but that's probably not going to be something that's going to be always there. There may be an, a queue line to get in eventually, but down the road, as the newness is worn off and other things open up and become available, um, this may be more of a subdued thing to, to go through. Yeah. 
and then uh, I guess Figment. If you're excited to meet Figment, you can. I guess they have a, uh, a, a cast member dressing up as Figment to greet to everybody. <laughs> well, yeah. The, um, well, speaking of meet and greets, yes, you you, you have uh, a Figment meet and greet taking place in the Journey into Imagination, where you're able to meet Penelope before they rethemed that, and it's now Figment coming out. Um, wearing his yellow sweater, which some people that we know would be very happy about that. <laughs> um, but yes, he, he is, he's doing a mean greet there. Uh, first time that you've had just Figment by himself doing a mean greet. Before, it was always Figment with Dreamfinder, and that was back in the 80s. Haven't seen that in a long time. Now they're bringing where you just meet Figment, um, which is which is really cool. I Next time I'll be there, I will be Trying to get my picture and autograph with him. Mm-hmm. But he's not the only meet and greet coming to Epcot. As Also, there's going to be a permanent Moana meet and greet coming to Epcot, which is built into part of the Journey of Water. The Journey of Water, yeah. So you'll have Moana in there where you can meet her, Figment in Imagination, um, Mickey and Minnie in their uh, Centennial outfits are also... Um, a meet and greet going on currently so you, you got a lot of things coming back to epcot that have been have been missing haven't been been available uh for quite some time as they're going through all this all this work the dreamers point statue is now going to become available and that whole area um they, they're selling those mini statues of the dreamers point statue which are going for 95 dollars at the creation shop um it's something I kind of want to get a hold of. <laughs> mm, don't blame you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you got that. And then they also had announced finally that Luminous is coming, which is going to be the Luminous, the Symphony of Us, the new nighttime spectacular coming to Epcot, taking place on the lagoon. Um, and uh, that will be coming December 5th. December 5th, my birthday. Happy birthday. They, they set off a fireworks show. They designed a fireworks show for your birthday. Just for me. <laughs> just for you, David Goldman. You understand all this is happening just for you. Yeah. That Disney shut down Harmonious, got rid of the giant tacos and uh, the Atlas Globe in the middle of it, got rid of uh, the uh, Star, Star, Stargate and the tacos, got rid of that for you, um, spending billions and you know, millions in construction. <laughs> for your birthday, yep. one night only, Luminous. No, not one night only. It's going to be a permanent be every night. ongoing yeah. show. Yeah, I'll, I'll have an adult. I'll Thank have you. an. Ad, I'm sorry. I'll have an adult beverage. I'll kick back on my couch. I'll I'll pull up so whoever's live streaming the event and watch it on my birthday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. No, oh. but you you heard a rumor out there. I do want to talk about this um, about why it's. Because originally they were talking about it coming around September or October that they were going to uh, debut the show, but now we know it's not coming till December. And you mm-hmm. saw a rumor why that might be the case, and I do want to talk about this because I do have a um, a viewpoint on that. You talking about the uh, because of the music that was going along? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's why I, I don't know. I was rolling, I was looking for Disney news, and that popped up that they. Uh, I don't know, I guess the trial or whoever was listening to the music before they were going to launch it did, didn't approve of it at the time. So they're like, before we go live with this, we need to tighten it up, I guess. That was what I had heard. Now, I don't, I never heard it, so I can't judge. What do you think? <laughs> so my my take on that is, is that a possibility? Yes. Can that be the only reason? No, because, and, and bear with me here. The music is one element of it, mm-hmm. but you need the sh- show, the the whatever the the vessels are that are carrying the pyrotechnics and and whatever the show elements are going to be done. Mm-hmm. They are still sinking pylons into the middle of the lagoon for this, so the construction is behind. Now the construction wouldn't be behind because the music need to be reworked, and the construction's construction's behind because the destruction is taking time or they just don't have the resources available mm-hmm. to them because it was only not too long ago that they pulled out the giant tacos in the stargate and took them apart and now they're starting to build the new structures and put everything into place so 
if the if the only if the issue was the music, then everything else should have been ready by now. If it was supposed to come out September October, everything else would have been ready. And not and nothing else is ready. Nothing's even close to being ready. Right. So that's why I'm thinking this is more along the lines of okay, this is going to be a bigger project than we expected. It's taking us longer. Okay. Not to be just simply based on well, the music need to be redone. Mm. Music game need to be rewritten takes. Maybe a month, mm. not three months. Right. So, <clears throat> um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe the author of that article had it out for the guy. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> kind like, of what I'm thinking. I mean, but that was that was the case with Harmonious, mm-hmm. and that didn't delay it all that much. Yeah. And again, the barges and everything were done. They that was all set up when they had to redo the music for that. Mm. But as far as that being the case with Luminous. I I I can't say that I don't say maybe they didn't say that no the music needs to be retweaked and, and worked on some more. I, I mean that it's still quite possible. But for that to be hinging the, the whole reason the only problem, right. No, because yeah. again, the construction's not even any near anywhere near done. Yeah. Yeah. So. I agree. All right, so that, that was it that's, for, that's it for Epcot, right? I think uh yes. Oh wait, there is some studios. There's one thing for the studios. They got they got oh nope. Another thing for Epcot. Epcot also uh return of soaring over California. Oh yeah. yeah. Soaring around the world. Um a lot of people are saying it's because of how bad some of the visuals were, especially if you were on if you weren't dead center, if you were on more of the, the flanking ends that the image distortion was really bad, especially with the Eiffel Tower and stuff. That could be one possible reason. My other thing I was thinking of why they, they're redoing the film. So that's why you, you bring back Soaring Over California, not just because everyone loved it, but also because it uh, gives you time to create whatever the next film is and okay. get that out there. And part of that is Soaring Over Around the World you end up in Epcot. Well, if you look at the Epcot that you used from soaring around the world to the Epcot that's there now, looks nothing the same. Okay. So are they going to revamp? They're going to revamp the whole video to a more modern time or? They haven't announced that, but I wouldn't see why not. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, that they I mean, it, would, it, it, it would make sense. It would make sense. Just give it a modern twist of new landscapes or, or whatever. Yeah, I I don't understand, and maybe this is something that they they may be even considering. Um, but I don't understand why you couldn't give it the Star Tours treatment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, every time you ride it, you're going to different countries, and it doesn't always have to be like one or two countries. You could do three or four countries still, and 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 randomize it and, and mix it up. Because all it is is you know the the vehicles lift up, and then they've played the film. There's there's not too much, and they turn on the fans, of course. But there isn't like you're not really reprobing reprogramming a ride vehicle like you were a Star Tours. Mm. So it, it seems to me like an easy no brainer of you know, and it gives it more re rideability. Not that soaring has much trouble with re rideability. I mean, there's always a, a line there. Right. <laughs> But um, that is uh, something that's going on. Yeah, because it's soaring over California for a limited time uh, in conjunction with the celebration of 100 years of Disney. And so there was nothing for Hollywood, right? Nothing? No, Hollywood there is. Uh, Star Tours, speaking of Star Tours, um, Star Tours will be getting additional planets and characters. So along with, you know, seeing Princess Leia, um, Luke Skywalker, Yoda... All of them showing up. You will now also be getting Ahsoka, Grogu, Mando, Boba Fett, and Fennec Shan. Nice. So they will be making their way into into Star Tours. So a welcomed uh, uh, a welcomed addition. Yeah, I I think that'll be fun. I I I'll take that. I really would love to get the Ahsoka uh, walk around though in the mm. in the parks. I mean, we finally got Mando. Let's, you know. Yeah. Can we get Ahsoka too? <laughs> well, we'll get. I mean, her show's out now, so you know they're they're gonna they're gonna pump her in there, so you know, because that's what's current right now. So yeah, 
Go get it right there. And, and most people have been enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mixed. You know that. <laughs> um, that's for another show. <laughs> that's for another time. Heading over to the Magic Kingdom. Yes, we Magic got, Kingdom. In November, the Hatbox Ghost will be finally making his spooky delight in Welcome to uh, the Haunted Mansion. So he will be finally uh, coming into there. You have new is music part, coming. Is, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is yeah. he a part of the actual ride or is he yes. like a, 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 okay. So as you're going through the Haunted Mansion, you're now going to see him in there. Yeah. And shortly after the, the staircase and stuff, wherever you're making your way through, kind of, I want to say it's almost like the hotel room mm-hmm. section where you see the doors moving. And then you look down the endless hallway, yeah, with yeah. The, the floating candelabra. Mm-hmm. That is where the hat box ghost is uh, apparently going. Okay. So, um, so kind of an interesting, controversial placement for a lot of people, saying you know that's the first place you see a go, you don't see ghosts at, up to that point, and this and that. That's where they're putting them, folks. Yeah, a few years, you, you're not going to be complaining so much, right? <laughs> uh, as long as the the effect work keeps working properly. Mm-hmm. Um, Country Bear Jamboree will be getting new music. Uh, Liver's Lips name is changing for whatever reason, but they're going to be it's going to be Disney music done in country style. Um, and they're shortening the show again. So it's they shortened the show already from its previous run, and now it's it's going to get even slightly shorter by a couple minutes, um, just to give I guess better turnaround time. And especially with Ty- Tiana's opening up across the street, gives pe- more people to be able to go there instead of you know creating huge, huge lines. Right at uh, at Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And it looks like they're doing a new Pirates of the Caribbean inspired lounge. Uh, yes, in, in Adventureland. Yes, they. Um, I think across the way where I believe Tartuga's Tavern is uh, is the potential location for that. The Barker Birds coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, lounge to me uh, implies adult beverages, um, so they'll have some sort of probably adult beverages going on there. Very little information on that, but that is coming around. I mean, they have it at Disneyland. Disneyland, the Blue Bayou restaurant is right over Pirates of the Caribbean, and you you see into the attraction as people are sailing off there. Makes sense that you know they're trying to do something like that over here. Uh, I, mean, I think that will work. I think that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. And we know where we'll where we'll find you. Oh yeah, but well, but I'm also because like I never knew how the Pirates of the Caribbean Caribbean uh, um, ride did there. Like, was it that popular? Because they've been out for a while now, so I didn't know if that was one of them things that they may um, revamp. You know what I mean? But to see mm-hmm. them expand on it or spread out, I would assume that they're doing well and they want more of that theme. Yeah, it's still a very popular, uh, very popular attraction, very popular. Um ip uh so that that's it makes sense that they're they're doing this and then i think the one last thing that they got there is for the uh, and there could be an expansion beyond big thunder mountain or something yeah the they they did mention about the beyond big thunder mountain area uh still is being considered and still in the works like you said they're talking about 60 billion dollars that makes you know the beyond the big thunder mountain area um a very viable possibility. Uh, Josh Damaro was saying it will be the largest expansion ever uh, to a, a park. So there's a lot of acreage there that they are going to be incorporating incorporating into. Yeah, because well, from what I'm reading, it's saying that they're gonna it's gonna be similar to Galaxy's Edge or, or Avatar. That's it will be know, larger than that. Yes. Yeah, larger. You know what I mean? Like, you know, so who the heck? You no rumors as to what they could be doing, right? It's just they have the property to do something. Villain Land, Coco, Encanto. The, there's a number of things that have been tossed around. Supposedly, the villains is actually one of the more, uh, more firm ideas that they, you know, the direction that they definitely want to head into. Mm-hmm. So, um, we shall see. We'll see. We'll, we'll let you know as we find out more, but. Uh, they are definitely working on all that, and it's so exciting that the a bear even broke into the park. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I, thinking I, he wanted to try out for the new Country Bear show, um, saying, hey, do you, do you need extras? Um, 
took residence in a tree in Frontierland by Big Thunder Mountain, um, shut down Liberty Square, Adventureland, mm-hmm. uh, Frontierland, all that got shut down. Um, I think he even heard um, Small World. So cast members are out making sure the guests were safe. Nothing happened. Bear yeah. was relocated by uh, Fish and Wildlife, uh, Florida's Fish and Wildlife. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's how authentic Disney makes things. They even bring in live bears. <laughs> yeah, I, I would rather have the section of the park closed due to renovations, not for, you know, wildlife. <laughs> And the scary part was, because I saw TikToks and stuff on this, is that people were walking around not knowing, because they weren't telling them, obviously, for obvious reasons, they weren't right. telling them what was going on. They were just like, you know, parks closed or whatever. But And then you go on the app and see, like, all the, all the, the sections, sections that were closed. That area was closed. All closed, yep. <laughs> all right. Anything else you want to bring up, Dave? Got no, sir. I think, I think we kind of covered uh, most of the stuff out of that Destination D23, so... All right, um, one last quick thing, because we have just uh, two, three more minutes. But new Doctor Who trailer dropped oh. for the 60th, 60th anniversary. Just uh, you want to get your uh, your thought on it. Very excited, because they the, from the trailer, it was in the area of Doctor Who that I have been able to watch. So seeing Donna, uh, Donna up there with David Tennant reprising the role was awesome. Uh, it, I mean, because I'm still stuck in the oh, what 2009 area or whatever. So to yeah, see you're it, still in the Matt Smith group. Yeah. So to see it like in high def with the better, you know, uh, high the better quality graphics or whatever, animate not animation, uh, sci-fi yeah, effects and yeah. stuff. It, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to get to. It looks phenomenal, and it, it that would if I was a diehard Doctor Who fan, that would scratch that itch. Say, okay, let's go, let's get it on. <laughs> I I cannot say on this show what my first uh first impression were but it, yeah. it i was uh blown away by it yeah um neil patrick harris is repri- is bringing back a old character of uh, the toy maker which is i believe a william hartnell um adversary so that was from the celestial toy maker those episodes are still considered lost i believe um unless if they did recently get those back and have been working on them and haven't released that information yet which i wouldn't be surprised Mm -hmm. so um either way uh, i'm looking forward to it i think it's going to be great it looks so good and just kind of the the taste of the storyline that they gave you um just looks like it's going to be fantastic now one one quick question one last question on that on the trailer the last person you see before it ends is that the new doctor yes okay that's what i thought but i just because i was like who's this random guy oh that's the new doctor <laughs> yeah that's that's the guy who be ta- who will officially be taking over right okay as when david Tennant leaves again yeah because it was it was just weird it was like it played out and then you saw him and then it ended i'm like well who's that <laughs> that made no sense <laughs> uh, you haven't been paying that much attention but yeah that that is the upcoming upcoming doctor yeah all right awesome Dave, thank you so much. Yep. Thanks again for having me. You're welcome. And uh, we will be talking soon. You got it. Thank you again for listening, everyone. Thank you, Dave, for joining us again. Find us on the social medias and let us know what are you excited about that's been announced, possible futures. What would you like to see Disney do with $60 billion for the parks and entertainment? Join our social networks, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. We can be found all at WD Magic Cast. Even threads. We're on threads. Keep forgetting about that one. YouTube as well. You could leave us a voice message through the Anchor app or anchor.fm and be heard on the show as well. Links to all these are in the show notes. I want to thank you for your time. I know how little time we all have these days. The fact that we get to spend some time together truly means a lot to us over here at WD MagicCast. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you could, please go on to Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, leave us a rating or review. We have all five-star reviews. 
out there at the moment. Please keep them coming. We need more. Don't want to be greedy, but the more he reviews it, Eve, the more that they will promote our show. Or share out a link on your social networks about it. Don't forget to tag us at WD Magic Cast so this way we can thank you personally. The more people we get involved, the better it is. Walt believed in a big Disney family, and so do I. Don't forget to subscribe to the show while you're at it. This way you always know when a new episode is posted. Or be- consider becoming a premium subscriber. Really help the show out. You can do this over at anchor.fm slash wdmagicast slash support. I believe that address has changed as well. Or check the show notes. I have the information there. Also check out, while you're in the show notes, check out our merchandise shop where you can find some really cool WD Magic Cast stuff on there for sale. Remember, this show is brought to you by listeners like you. Whatever troubles, whatever darkness you're facing out there, don't give up. Don't don't ever give up. Be your own hero. Never give up. Never give in. Let the world see what an amazing person you truly are. Because there's only one person like you, and there's a reason. No one else can be you. And you are important to many people. More than you probably realize. Don't give up on that. Because as much as you're counting on someone, someone's counting on you. Now I'd like to end this show's, this week's show with a quote from Walt Disney himself. Every child is born blessed with a vivid imagination. But as a muscle grows flabby with dis- disuse, so the bright imagination of a child pay- pales in years later if he ceases to exercise it. Again, that's from Walt Disney. Thank you again for listening, everyone, and I'll see you next time.